Hello, and it's time for yet another Ask Me Anything. Uh, my answers to your questions and comments. Now, first off, let me say thank you ever so much for all the questions. I really didn't expect and be needing to do another one of these videos quite so soon. So thank you very much for that. Uh, if you have asked me a question, what I'll always do is leave a note in the comments to let you know that I'll be answering it in this series so you don't think I'm ignoring you. Um, so with that said, a lot to get through. Don't want to keep you too long, so let's crack on. So the very first question I'm going to cover is from David Williams. Excuse me while I read the questions. Uh, I have a fixed 24 millimeter lens. Could I find a use for it in landscape photography? Short answer, absolutely 100% definitely yes. First off, any prime lens is a good lens. It will usually be sharper than most telephoto lenses unless you're paying stupid money. And by that I mean, you know, 1500 to 2000 pounds for top end glass because prime lenses have fewer elements and just by the very nature of their manufacture tend to be sharper. At 24 millimeters, that's a really useful wide angle focal length and you'll be able to find all sorts of applications for that in landscape photography. So stick it on your camera, get out there and have some fun with it. And I'd really like to see uh, what you're able to do with it. Thanks ever so much for that question. The next question, Colin Adams. Uh, thank you ever so much, Colin. Colin says, at the Lone Tree, you were using some kind of lighting as seen reflected in your glasses. Um, funnily enough, the fill lighting that I'm using for this, I've tried to be careful that it doesn't reflect in my glasses. Um, can I ask what you were using? Yes, you can. One moment. This is the rig that I use when I want to be mobile. Um, I don't use it all the time. When I've got the stills camera set up, I'm usually using a couple of these cheap action cameras. I'll come on to that a little bit more in a moment. But this little light that I've got fitted on this bracket, which is an aftermarket bracket, you, you buy it separately to the Smooth 4 gimbal that I use for my uh, smartphone. This little bracket has a hot shoe on one side so I can attach a, a shotgun mic. I actually don't use this shotgun mic very often because even though it's not a cheap Chinese knockoff, unusually for me, uh, it is the real thing. It's a Rode Video Micro. The problem is it is really sensitive to wind noise. And given that most of my landscape photography involves a lot of wind in more ways than one, um, it doesn't get much of an outing. I do tend to use a, a much better clip on mic and record my uh, sound onto my phone. But this little uh, 15 quid unit, 49 LEDs, um, is really good because it's, it's dimmable as you can see. Uh, so what I'll do is if the light's a bit gray, I'll just use it as a fill light. Um, but because landscape photography does entail quite a lot of being out in gold, uh, sorry, in blue hours, um, so I'm either before sunrise or after sunset. In the past, I've struggled, and actually I've noticed other uh, vloggers where their pictures of themselves are very dark. So for 15 quid, little lamp like that, um, this is fitted on with a little quarter inch screw bracket. If I'm not using the video mic, this swaps around straight onto the hot shoe. Really good, very, very highly recommended. Now, I had a dialogue um, earlier this week uh, with a vlogger called Rob Outen uh, from Essex, I think. And Rob was asking me about the cameras that I use. I did give him quite a lengthy reply in writing, but it was on his vlog. Uh, so I thought it might be useful because I have had questions about the uh, cameras that I use for filming. Uh, so in addition to the iPhone 7, which is what I'm filming this on, um, which I use on the Smooth 4 gimbal, uh, and what I tend to do with that is even if I'm not wanting to be mobile, I'll use it with the selfie camera on the iPhone where it allows me to frame myself up. So if, for example, I want a lone tree or a mountain to be visible behind me without me blocking it, I can frame myself up really easily. Um, as long as I've got some decent light, the selfie camera, as far as I'm concerned, is good enough. It's more important to me that my audio is good. So that works fine. But when I use the back camera on my iPhone uh, with Filmic Pro filming in uh, log profile, uh, at 60 frames per second, that gives me great B-roll. And I use the gimbal when I want the camera to move. 
If I don't want the camera to move, then I'll simply park it somewhere. And I've either used a cheap tripod. This little Amazon Basics tripod weighs next to nothing. Um, it's disposable. They cost about 15 quid each. And in the last 18 months, I'm on my third. So when they break, I just throw them away and buy another one. And the reason for that is it's absolutely featherweight, but it's full height. And what that allows me to do is to put it in position somewhere around where I'm using my stills camera. And I've got two of these little uh, 90 degree Hawkeye Firefly 8S's on these little, I've got them both on these little mini ball heads. And that allows me to park one on the tripod, say one on the hot shoe of my stills camera so I can have it facing me. So what that allows is I've got all sorts of camera angles available to me when I'm doing a piece about taking a still shot. So hopefully it makes it a little bit more interesting. Uh, one of my favorite shots is an over the shoulder one. Another thing that I always do, um, and again, this was in answer to Rob Outen, is I always take some footage with the actual DSLR because then when I'm describing my setup, my composition, the light that I'm seeing, you as a viewer can also see it and I can cut that into the vlog so that either I'll just cut it in full frame or if, I'm, uh, if I've got a camera in vertical orientation, then I'll just do a picture in picture. But it means that when I'm describing something as a viewer, you can see what I'm up to. Um, and hopefully that's helpful. Next question is from, here we go, Hot Chip One. No idea what your real name is. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for watching and thanks ever so much for your question. Um, he asks, uh, he's looking to get into landscape photography. He's after a small camera system to pop into his backpack and he's thinking about micro four thirds. And he goes on to ask, uh, any advice you could give me on starting my photography journey would be appreciated. I'm going to preface my answer to you here, Hot Chip, by saying that I'm by no means uh, a definitive person to answer technical questions about equipment. So micro four thirds. The short answer, as per the, the short answer for David about the 24mm prime lens, is absolutely yes. I've read and heard and it's pretty widely accepted that a micro four thirds image with something like a 16 or 20 megapixel sensor will allow you to create prints up to about um, 16 by 12 without any loss of definition whatsoever. Now the bottom line is that with a micro four thirds system, you're getting a small lightweight system that not only is easy and portable to get out to where you're going to want to be to make the most of landscape photography, but also um, it's going to be uh, it's going to allow you to get into the uh, pastime without spending stupid amounts of money. Um, now I sort of did the same thing that you're planning, except I went one slightly step higher up with this, which is my Nikon D5500 workhorse camera. It's got a 24 megapixel uh, APS-C sensor. So it's a slightly bigger sensor than Micro Four Thirds. But the key thing is I don't do any printing or at least negligible printing. And when I have done some, knowing that I, I was going to print, what I've done is I've used a, a panoramic technique so it gives me a much bigger image, which then allows me to print to, you know, a meter or even four foot wide, which I've done quite successfully. So even with a micro four thirds, there's nothing to stop you utilizing other techniques if you know you're going to want to print. Um, definitely a micro four thirds, you'd struggle more with astrophotography because of the amount of noise on the small sensor. But if you're planning to go out and shoot landscapes at the lowest possible ISO, which is what most of us do, then yes, definitely micro four thirds would be a great way to get into it. And quite frankly, there are some excellent micro four thirds cameras out there, which you wouldn't even think, oh, well, I need to trade up if I get more interested in it. So I um, hope that answers your question. Sorry, I waffled on a bit there and I meant to keep this as short as possible. It's not working out at all well. Right, the final question comes from Simon Harding and he asks, I have a question regarding inspiration and motivation. Are you entirely self-motivated and inspired or do you draw on other resources for inspiration? 
Really good question, Simon. Actually, something I haven't been asked before, and it really made me stop and think about it. So I appreciate that. I'm going to answer it by quickly giving you a bit of background information, because otherwise my answer won't make much sense. I started with landscape photography in 1980 uh, with an SLR camera, and I couldn't afford darkroom facilities because I was only 18. I couldn't afford to get film developed, so I did my own uh, developing of 35mm transparencies, because you can do that quite easily. So for about five years, I was really into landscape photography and sort of learnt my trade back then. I took a break from it because I had family and career and all sorts of other things going on in my life for about 25 years. And I came back to it about three or four years ago. And so when I came back to it, I wasn't coming at it as a new hobby. Yes, the equipment had moved on dramatically. And what I was doing, in fact, was waiting for the right equipment to be available at the right price point because I wasn't going to invest in something that wasn't going to produce the quality that I require. Um, so when I came back to it, there were one or two people whose work I looked at and thought, that's great. I would really like to be able to emulate that because they really know what they're doing. I'm talking about people like um, Carl Holtby and a local lady called Cheryl Hamer. Um, these guys really understand their craft and that was something that I aspired to, coming back into it and being rusty and that was, that was something that made me think, well, if that's what can be produced with modern digital cameras, then the time is right for me to get back into it. So that was my initial thing two or three years ago. Nowadays, the people whose photography I look at regularly are my colleagues and friends on the Facebook groups, um, Landscape Photography on YouTube UK, uh, UTOGs, the people whose vlogs that I follow. Um, I look at their images on their websites, their Instagram, their Flickrs and wherever else. Um, and those are the people, they're the peer group that I, I aspire to come up to their level. Um, so it's a whole host of names. And if I can do stuff that they look at and say, hey, that's not bad. Frankly, I'm, I'm happy with that. That for me is, is as good an accolade as, as I'm ever going to get. With regards to motivation, because um, that's inspiration that I've just covered. I've always been an outdoorsy sort of person. You can't help it living where I live in North Wales. So when I'm out and about, um, I have three things that I'm looking to get out of it. Firstly, and by far the most important, is to get out and have a walk and get some fresh air and get some exercise and enjoy some stunning scenery. So going for a walk. And I was doing that long before I took photography up again. Secondly then was to take some stills. And thirdly, after a year or so was to start vlogging. So if I go out and I don't vlog, but I take stills, then that's fine. If I don't take any stills, that doesn't matter because I went out for a walk. So the priorities are in that order. Um, so I don't actually struggle with motivation. It was interesting. I had a very brief dialogue with somebody. Um, oh, I, I remember who it was now. It was Owen Clark. He said he struggled to get out of bed and I commented on his vlog. When I'm going out for an early morning shoot, I struggle to sleep because I'm like a kiddie on New Year, Christmas Eve. If I know I'm going out for a fabulous walk to take photographs, I have no trouble getting up, um, none whatsoever. So I guess the argument is that I don't have any trouble with motivation whatsoever. It, I, I am at an advantage in that respect because living on Anglesey with the coastline on my doorstep and the mountains only 20 minutes away, I'm spoiled for choice, to be honest. But um, what can I say? Um, right. So that's about it for today. Thank you very much indeed for the question. Sorry I've droned on a bit. If you've tuned out, I don't blame you. If you're still here, thank you very much. So I'm going to leave it there for this one. Thank you ever so much for all your questions. Um, if you've got any more questions, leave them in comments. I'll leave you a note to say I'll be answering them on an Ask Me Anything. Thank you ever so much. 
This weekend, I'm out with Mally and I think Tim Day and Joseph Seeger are coming along. Those are all vloggers that I strongly recommend you check out if you haven't already, and a whole bunch of other top class photographers. Um, and right there is a great big slab of inspiration for landscape photography. So thanks ever so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And guess what? If you haven't done it yet, why not subscribe now and join me next time? Cheers.